Taylor, you just had to listen to us prattle on there for a little while. Who do you think's more to blame, the uh -huh. manager or the players? <laughs> Uh, you two are the best. I absolutely love this show <laughs> every single time I'm on it. Honestly, Greg Berhalter said it's on him, right? Greg said it's on him and his staff, and so he answers the question for us. And so he raises his hand, he takes accountability, and says it is on him. I completely agree with Herc and you, Seb, in the sense that if you look at what Germany did, if you look at what the Netherlands did against lesser opponents, they rotated maybe three players, hmm. not seven. Mm -hmm. And so you're over-calculating and you're overthinking this three days of travel and high heat and whatever. This is World Cup qualifying. You have to get as many points as you can get as quickly as possible, no matter who's in front of you. And so for me, there's a way over-calculation about the travel and the humidity and the heat, which by the way, for the record, if you are gonna make seven changes in that kind of weather, it behooves you to use Major League Soccer players that have been playing in that weather for the last four months. So how those players showed up and laid an egg with no energy, no enthusiasm, nothing whatsoever is beyond me, but this is on the manager. Because in my opinion, the rest of the world is still treating every single opponent the same way by rotating the squad, with two or three players, not an overhaul of seven players against a team that Mexico struggled playing down there, as you said, Herc. Any team that's played Panama and Panama has struggled. So the proof is in the pudding. You've seen it. Panama is a better team than they have been in years past, quite honestly, than when we've gone down there, Herc, myself, and the generation ahead of us that went down there and got results. And so I, I just think there was way too much overthinking in this. And uh, they undercalculated how good Panama is at home home and they're overthinking this way too much at times about fitness and about travel and all of this when the rest of the world is doing similar types of things. Now in saying that Seb, I'm with you in this extent. The players have some accountability, my word. Like, the, the, it's one thing to talk about tactics and, and technique and Herc tweeted this and he's 100% right about arrogance. But the first thing you gotta have, the first thing you gotta have is energy. You've gotta have the ability to run, compete and fight. If you don't even have that, I can't even talk about the other stuff because you're not providing the simple fundamental thing, which is run through a wall and play for your country, which they got none of that last night. And four years ago, the United States lost to Trinidad and Tobago. This was almost an identical performance that made everyone want to puke mm. because you didn't get the compete factor first. Talk about tactics later, but give me the compete and give me the fight, and then we'll worry about whether or not you can pass the ball. But if you're not going to run, what's the point of showing up? Yeah, let me run something by you real quick, because I've heard this narrative about running, about trying, about intensity, and that's all, that's all good. It, it looks good from afar. But have you ever been, Taylor, have you ever been in an environment where your legs feel weak, where all of a sudden the opponent's on top of you, where you see the crowd and you're like, I don't see this mm -hmm. week in, week out, and then the goal comes in and you feel like the world is coming down on you. I saw all that from these players mm -hmm. so we can talk about trying we can talk about competing we can talk about intensity we can talk about desire all that stuff but if you've never been there done that that seems to, that's something to be said there okay no okay. the experience is a real thing Herc the experience is a real thing it's a great point it's a real thing uh, one of the things that came out of the first match was how everybody was in love with this new young midfield, the midfield trio that, that Greg Berhalter uses uh, in mm -hmm. Austin against Jamaica, right? Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams, Eunice Musa. Uh, obviously, there's some limitations there, right? Tyler Adams, he's told us, Greg Berhalter, that he's got to watch those minutes. He hasn't been playing with Leipzig 90 minutes a game. He's not going to risk him here. Uh, mm -hmm. Weston McKinney, we know, wasn't available for this match. Eunice Musa's back in, um, but you have a couple different players in there as well. Sebastian Legette. Kellen Acosta and I think I mean it's a cliche Taylor but it really feels like this game is lost in midfield what do we make of, of kind of the different levels of play that we see three days apart from a midfield trio that while is different still has one guy in it that's the same and that's Yunus Musa. Yeah, what's concerning for me, Herc and Seb, is this, is that there really is only one six on this roster, and that's Tyler Adams. And the moment you take Tyler Adams out of the middle, everything looks discombobulated, everything looks unhinged, and it doesn't feel comfortable within the system. Yes, he came off the bench in this one, but there was energy immediately to the game. Everyone had a little bit more pep in their step, whatever it may be. There was a few more options to pass the ball through the midfield and whatnot. I think Weston McKinney at times plays as if he wants to run the show, 
as if he's the guy that can run the show. I don't think he's that type of player. And I think he needs to transform more to the guy that we saw at Schalke. And so I understand the area of concern and I get it. But I'm still, and I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but they're not creating a ton of chances. The final product isn't there all the time. And I know Greg Berhalter and his staff love the model of expected goals, but when you look at the last 13 games that I'm beating, it's not as if they're, they're creating two, three, four expected goals every single game. And so chances are extremely limited for this team. So no matter what it is, and I understand if Tyler Adams is healthy, the midfield's less of a concern for me. But regarding Ricardo Pepe up front or not, this team still struggles to score goals. And Herc, I don't know if you've seen the same thing I have, yet why can they not score goals in the first half and then have to react, change things, and come out in the second yeah. half? That, in a nutshell, is a problem. Yeah, that's, and Sebi was alluding to that you know, earlier on in the segment where you talk about he got things right at halftime. His adjustments were correct, and they weren't this go-around. That still begs the question, why are you starting that way? Now, we, mm -hmm. we talk about Greg Berhalter and the style he wants to implement, mm -hmm. and Taylor, you're right. He loves these expected goals. He's very much, excuse the term, a, a, a stat nerd when it comes to that, a, a PowerPoint nerd. But football isn't played that way. Football isn't played with numbers. It's played with feeling. It's played with instincts. And this is the problem. We talk about about him being a possession-based coach, this team being a possession-based team, for 10 halves, they've not been that. They've had two good halves, eight very bad no. halves. And you look at the outside backs, to me, very important because when those outside backs have been good and taking care of the ball, it gets the center of the midfield going. It gets Tyler Adams. It gets Weston McKinney. It gets whoever's in there, yep. Eunice Musa, whoever's in there, involved, which gets Serginio Dest, Anthony Robinson. When those fullbacks are good, when they take care of the ball, the team has confidence. When they don't, they rely on their center backs to come out with it, and it's route one, and it's very, very ugly. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.